welcome to the Alpha Game Review's first look of Adventure Manager. This is a sort of a strategy RPG game that has come out very recently on Early Access, I believe within the last two weeks. It is only $4.99, so very reasonably priced. Uh, the game was apparently supposed to be more of a mobile game, like a, a tablet-oriented game uh, at first, but has been refocused with the PC market in mind. Or perhaps the developers have simply decided, uh, you know, they would they would rather develop for PC gamers instead. And so now we have it on Steam, and as you can see, it is a definitely an old school sort of feel. But what's interesting about this game is that it's all about providing the old school RPG battle mechanics without any of the fluff surrounding that. In other words. This is specifically a game for folks that maybe played uh, the Final Fantasy series, for example, and decided, mm, you know, that's fine, but actually I think the story is kind of dumb. I don't like that. I don't really care about, um, you know, the art or the villains or whatever. I just want to kill things in turn-based combat and get loot for it. And that's, that's exactly what this is. You start out managing one adventure party, which is all I have right now, but you can eventually manage up to four. And let's just go ahead and start with some of the combat because I've got some enraged spiders right here, and I don't think they're going to let me just get away too easily. So you can see exactly what the combat is like. And you're probably thinking, ah, oh, it looks pretty basic. And, you know, at least at this level, it definitely is. And probably will remain for some time because you only get new abilities for your characters uh, once every 10 levels according to the skill tree. There might be some items uh, in there that add abilities as well. I'm not entirely sure about that, but you know, generally speaking, what you see is what you're going to get for a while. On the other hand, this does have the, I don't know, this refreshing and relaxing simplicity that you would expect from an old school game of this type. There are definitely important tactical considerations like where your guys are positioned in the front or the rear line, where the enemy guys are positioned in the same, and how you should focus your fire, whether or not it's a good idea to focus on the bigger enemies or try and take out the smaller ones quickly and get rid of any damage you might do. You know, you have to decide who you're going to taunt, how you're going to heal, or whether or not it'd be better to use your healer for offense at times. So it's it's a simple game, but I would, it's definitely not an easy one. Um, you know, as you can see, my tank's getting beat up pretty badly, and I actually had to come back to this dungeon a few times because when I first started, I just wasn't equipped and high enough level to handle the monsters in here. This is probably my third attempt back, and I have had Jeff die on me in my previous attempt. So there's definitely some, some challenge here. Uh, what makes Adventure Manager an actual posed management game is that there's also the element of handling multiple adventuring parties and the loot and deaths that they have on their adventures. And that that's occurs on the open world map which I'm going to show you here. Oh, I came across the camp. I assume I'm supposed to click. Let's see what happens. Oh, cool. My guys are rested. Hmm. So you can see this is the, the dungeon map. And basically you go from these little squares, which is room to room to room, and you get different encounters in each room. If you leave the dungeon and you come back, you will get new random encounters, which to some people might be a big annoyance. To others might be a benefit uh, basically though that's sort of your penalty for failing you can leave via the portal at any of these rooms but if you leave the monsters will respawn randomly and you'll have to beat a bunch of them all over again uh, and of course that's not necessarily fun for people who don't like repetitive tasks and this is the open world where you do your actual management uh, you have the adventure screen where you can see you can have up to four parties, although currently I'm locked to one because I'm just very low level. I haven't gotten that far in the game yet. 
uh, you're able to hire a very large roster of adventurers. Although currently, I just have this pat, which uh, I don't know if those are like ponytails or, or pigtails, or he's got a weird hat on, or what's going on with Pat. But that's the only uh, extra I have right now. Uh, there's also some different bonuses you can get for certain party configurations. And you got to manage each one of your guys. You click on them, and you can see all their stats. You can see Chris here is leveled up, and I haven't actually leveled him up his stats yet. So I'm going to do that right now. I want to give him some decks um, because he's got a ranged weapon. And as you can see, he's currently more of a strength guy. So I need to get that switched. And also over here, we've got the um, various items that I've looted in the latest dungeon run. I don't think anything here is too cool, uh, although that might be good for my mage. Let me check. Dexterity, intelligence, focus strength. Uh, you know, I think actually focus strength, I'll just give this to my uh, cleric. There we go. There's a lot of loot in this game, and that's something that I think is kind of cool about it because, you know, getting loot is one of the fun parts of any sort of RPG, be it an action RPG like Diablo or a turn-based RPG like a Final Fantasy series or even one of the strategic turn-based RPGs uh, like Age of Wonders 3. You know, you want loot uh, because that makes your characters cooler and it gives you an incentive to just go on to that next randomly generated fight and see what you get for it. And that that's something this game seems to have down because you get tons of loot and I can tell already from the stats that are coming out on this low-level loot that uh, Probably some of the loot gets pretty ridiculously good, and you really probably need it to advance to the later stages of the game. Now, the actual management aspect also comes across in the fact that you don't personally uh, undertake every adventure in the combat screen, or what, whatever you'd like to call it. The, the, the combat you saw earlier. That's not how every adventure goes down. Only some of them go down that way. There's also automated adventures, which I guess are kind of like just hitting a random num number generator. You send off your party, you see what you get. That's um, like Duck of Madness, okay? So we're going to click on this. We get some randomly generated text from uh, Orlay, the freelance sperm donor. Sounds like a very entertaining line of work. Uh, he wants you to go to the cave and wash 30 houses. And he will crest us with a firefly if we are successful. So we're going to take that. That sounds like a great, great task. And then we go over to the cave. We begin. Uh, select the Scourge, which is my adventuring party. Now you can see at the top we have a timer. And that's how long it's taking to do this adventure. And now we're done. We get our reward. Which is, in this case, is five gold and some experience. Uh, and items, but so far the low-level random automated adventures haven't given any good items, which isn't particularly uh, surprising. Probably get better items at the higher levels. Now, that may seem a little boring right now, but I think where this game really comes together um, is with more adventuring parties. You're going to be able to have adventuring parties going out while you are doing other tasks and you are personally managing some of your adventures on the harder quests, you're looking at your adventuring screen, you're going to you know, hire adventures, buying stuff, uh, looking for quests in the town, although this one doesn't have any right now. And also you can do some things to your kingdom. Uh, this is actually my guy, like this is, this is me, I'm the king, I don't go out and dirty my hands, I, I'm actually you know, behind the scenes. And you can see the statistics so far where I'm starting to work on my allegiance from Humania, which is, ah, it's where humans come from. Uh, Elf Elfia is where elves come from, and etc. Um, and you can also upgrade your castle to provide various bonuses, like experience and gold, um, to reduce the speed of adventures, and etc. This is, this is pretty expensive. I mean, you can see right now in the upper left-hand corner I have 308 gold, but I imagine as you get a higher level, that really um, probably adds up pretty quickly. And each one of these little areas on this rather attractive, uh, oh, it's a cool main map, are areas where you can eventually go on an adventure. Um, we've got 
a pyramid, we've got a crazy volcano, we've got some sort of druid forest area back here. Uh, pillage town. You know, you can go to all these different places and do quests and do adventures. So the idea of the game is that basically you have adventuring parties and you're managing them, manage your, their items, managing their experience so that they can go out and do better and, and get even better items. It's sort of, um, I mean, it's sort of a, a role-playing game with a lot of the combat aspects uh, taken out so that what you have left is sort of the fun of getting new stuff and leveling up. I don't think that's going to appeal to everyone, but I think it will have an appeal to uh, certain individuals. And for those that get addicted to this kind of game, you know, I think Adventure Manager could be something that a lot of time is invested in. Um, now, you may be wondering... In Maybe you're wondering, uh, are there any downsides to this, this game, which is an alpha? And the answer is absolutely, there are some downsides. The biggest downside is that this being a game that was supposedly going to be for tablets, it has some interface issues. All the interfaces are very basic. Um, they just, they look really basic. In addition to that, they just have sort of a layout which looks like it was made for a tablet. You have big buttons. You have, you know, um, areas where items are listed that don't really work the way you'd expect them to. Like you can't, you can't use a scroll wheel here to scroll through items. There's no scroll bar. You actually have to put your mouse cursor over it, left click, and then drag. And that is definitely, you know, a PC adaptation of a put your thumb down or put your finger down and scroll back and forth um, gesture input and I imagine that as this game gets developed further and further along we'll probably see some of these things go away but for now it is a little bit of annoyance and it can cause you to click the wrong thing it can cause you to accidentally put weapons on put armors on take them off sell them when you didn't mean to and etc and it's probably the game's biggest frustration Still, this is a $4.99 title. It's in alpha. It's in a pretty early state. Everything works, and the core concept is pretty solid, although definitely uh, a niche. It is something that people who like getting awesome loot are going to love. It's something that people who adore old school RPG combat are going to love. I think that. A lot of people are going to look at this game and are going to say, what? I mean, isn't this the kind of combat that we tried to get away from? <laughs> the turn-based combat that was just sort of dragged on and seemed to have very limited tactical options. But, you know, some people like that. And even, even I have to say that there's a relaxation element to this, to just sitting back, getting loot, clicking, not having to worry about whether or not you're put in the right direction or you're doing the right combo you just have to make some pretty basic but important tactical decisions in order to win the battles and also of course be leveled up so overall i would say that this is a this is a game that you should you should buy if you think you like this sort of genre if you like old school rpgs or if you like games that are relaxing and give you a chance to mess around with stats increase your stats this is definitely going to be a title you'll want to check out. It's a game that's supposed to get more expensive over time. It's going with the Minecraft model. So, you know, at, at $4.99, it's kind of hard to see why you wouldn't buy into it right now. I would say that if you are easily frustrated by uh, interface problems, or if you have any sort of desire for cool, cutting-edge graphics, and or you have minimal patience for repeating the same areas because you're definitely going to be doing that a lot in this game then stay away thanks for watching my quick look of adventure manager if you like what you see make sure to hit the subscribe button 
And also, if you've played this game, if you have any uh, opinions about it, if you think it's good, you think it's bad, be sure to leave a comment. I'm sure other people who were thinking about grabbing this would love to know what you think. This is Matt Doommaster with Alpha Game Review, signing off.